just to finish up with the recording, uh, remember to subscribe and to remember to like. Power Book 2, Season 2, Episode 5, Coming Home to Roost. The overall theme of the episode is karma, how your past actions implicate your future actions. So the scene starts off with Zeke, you know, looking at kids playing basketball on his way to turn himself in for the murder of Jabari Reynolds. But when they get to the 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 police station, the the lead DA said he is exonerated because they have other evidence. But they don't disclose what the evidence is. So, you know, Zeke gets to go back to school, you know, and then now Tariq, he's in class. And Professor Carey, you know, deviates from their previous assignment to talk about karma. And she asked Tariq, like, what is karma? And they were like, you know, it's cause and effects, how, you know, saying that, you know, your moral actions, it incentivizes your moral actions to do good. But she continues to pry to dig deeper to Tariq to really answer, like, what is karma? And, like, the rest of the class is like, what's, what's going on? You know what I mean? Because, like, before that scene, the detectives had gave her um, Jabari's um, notes for his second book where he's pretty much talking about how Tariq is a drug dealer. And she, you know, puts two and two together because she knows that um, he's not talking about Zeke or anything like that. So she kind of, she figures it out. And like, like now Tariq is kind of like, well, what's going on with that? But then as he and Lauren's going to go to um, look at some apartments for his sister because he's trying to get custody of his little sister from his grandmother. But in the previous episode, in episode four, Kane tells Monet that him and Tariq pretty much killed Jabari and tried to frame Ramirez for the... Um, for the Jabari murder. So Tariq, he sees Monet, has to tell Lauren, oh, don't worry about the apartment. You know, I'll get with you later. I'll see you later. And then Monet's pretty much confronting him. Like, oh, why did you lie to me? You know, you had two rules. Keep Zeke out of this and never lie to me. And, <laughs> you know, he, he violated both of those rules. So now she pretty much, you know, tells him like, you know, Kane, you figure out who's Kane's connect is. You know, and, then, you know, you'd be grateful that I didn't shoot you. So at this time, he, you know, calls Diana to um, get Kane to give him extra drugs so he can follow him to see who to connect is when he goes to drop off the money. So when he he does that, he gets beat up by one of Mecca's um, associates. <laughs> So Kane, he lies and said, oh, I don't know this guy, but the guy took one of his cell phones. They end up killing the guy and and then, you know, but like, you know, Tariq is beaten up. He has to go back to Diana. They kind of help him up and stuff like that. And he see that Drew is still hooking up with um, the, the, the guy from the basketball team, Everett. And so, like, now, at this at this point, Kane, he confronts Monet. He was just like, how do you want to have somebody follow me? You could have got me killed. And he, he, lets, he lets her know, like, yo, I'm not this dumb kid that you think I am. You know, I'm smart. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got this connect. You know, I'm a pivotal member of this family. And, like, you got to have to start respecting me like that. Then they're arguing about, like, what am, am I your son or am I the muscle? She was just like, oh, you're both and stuff like that. But, you know, in this season, Kane is emerging, you know, as a really strategic player. So, um, Monet, since, you know, he got caught when Tariq is going to the, the hearing to see if he can get his custody of his sister or temporary custody of his sister when they gets him in the car. And confronts him was like, you know, you're going to miss this appointment because you think you're in control, but I'm in control. But obviously, you know, Tariq, he outsmarts her and let her know, like, yo, you think you're in control, but you're not in control. Like, Drew is still hooking up with Everett. He's still going up to the to the campus. Um, Diana stole the money from your, your safe. And, and Kane, 
he has switched your coke with sugar you know, so, so now you need him for a new drug supplier. So it's just like, yeah, you know, you, you don't have control of, of none of your kids. So like, what are we doing here? So she, you know, lets him go and then he ends up getting um, custody, a temporary custody of his of his of his kids. <laughs> so everything is about to go smooth. But obviously, for those who watched in episode four, Kane, after they got Ramirez's better body out of the the water, he plants the badge in Tariq's desk. So obviously, they found that um, Detective Tate. And when Tariq comes back to campus, he's arrested for the double murder of Ramirez and Jabari Reynolds. Which the irony in that is there's some serial. Um, there's some similarities between him and Ghost when Ghost got arrested for killing Greg Knox. It was just like, oh, for the one thing that he didn't do, now he's getting in trouble with. But with Tariq, he obviously didn't kill Ramirez, but he did, you know, kill Jabari. And it's kind of like with the overall theme of karma and coming home to Roos, it's like, okay, this is... Tariq done killed three people. You know, he killed the cop. Um, he killed his father. And now he, he killed Jabari. And now he's on trial or getting arrested for a double murder. One of which he did, one of which he didn't do. And then obviously he, with the Jabari, he, you know, Kane started it. It was like an alley oop and, and, and Tariq finished it. So like that that dynamic with those similarities between him and his father, and then obviously the lawyer comes, and we all think it's you know McLean, but it's the estate lawyer, and he gives him this you know memo from his father saying if you ever were arrested for a homicide, you got to open this, and it's saying like oh, you deserve to be in prison, um, where you belong, but the most. Interesting thing what made this episode five super epic was that Monet's going home and she hears some Spanish speaking, some chatter, some commotion. She opens the door and her husband, Lorenzo Tejada, is at the head of the table with Kane, Diana, and Drew. And and then Drew goes, Oh, how did you be able to keep this a secret? And she didn't know. She had no clue. They went totally behind her back. And now Lorenzo's home. He's back in charge. I feel like Monet, she loved the limelight. She loved being in charge. And Kane, he looked at her, was like, he was better off in jail. Like, what's going on? Like, because, you know, he is, was kind of, he just, you know, came to the ranks and is like the head of the household. You know, before his father got out of jail, you know, really moving and making moves. Because, you know, in season one, the father wanted Drew to be the, the shot caller that had ace. But Kane was like, he ain't really built like that. You know, I want to have that that position, that role. So, like, that look between the mom and the son was just like, oh, this is this is bad news. But they're conflicted because this is their their father. But they got so accustomed to them you know, running the business with, you know, Tata in jail. So, you know, it's thanks to, you know, Cooper Sachs and, and Diana for doing what needed to be done. She stole the money from the safe in the bar and gave it to McLean. And Cooper Sachs was, you know, having relations with the DA. And she told him, like, yeah, you know, they were using false evidence to, to prosecute them. So, like, all of these cases getting overturned. So it's another win for, you know, Cooper Sachs and, and McLean. So I'm very interested to kind of see the dynamic between, you know, Kane Monet and Lorenzo going forward in episode six, which is not going to air to like January 7th and January 9th um, after the new year. But like this episode had a lot of, you know, you know, great, you know, storytelling between Kane and and Brayden, which cause he's manipulating, you know, Brayden. Um, Monet, who's trying to manipulate Kane and Tariq, and then Tariq trying to manipulate Diana, you know, 
and then everyone, so everyone's been manipulating everyone. But then, you know, obviously the elephant in the room, you got Lauren who really doesn't know what's going on and trying to beat it for Tariq and then setting him up for the epic failure. You know, wearing the, the watch, the Rolex that's a wire, and then they got her to wear a live wire where Tariq admits Jabari wasn't going to write about anybody white. He only was going to write about black people, but puts him in, in, in the motive. So it'll be interesting to see how, you know, McCall and Tariq come up with um, a case to exonerate him for a murder that he, half a murder that he is guilty with. And then, you know, something that he had nothing to do with. Obviously, there's not going to be any evidence that they probably can have. But said he put the, he planted the badge, but I don't know if it had um, any, um, any um, fingerprints on it from Tariq. Um, obviously, it didn't, but, but like this to the, the 